by narratives around robotics and the Terminator scenario and so forth. So I think it's almost impossible for uh, people to ignore this elephant in the room of what's next? You know, are these robots going to take off and do their own thing? Are they going to be our helpful slaves? We have this wonderful um, HBO TV series now, uh, Westworld, which yes, is really... Yes, well, I'm totally watching that. That's really good quality. That's They, yeah. they spend about 8 to $10 million per episode, which is a shame because they could be spending it on something. But, you know, this is... Getting out there, it's uh, these uh, these narratives are now, but you uh, serious narratives are getting out there. I mean, and and humans, the uh, the British production oh, humans, yes. yeah, that was equally really that was really equally dumb. sophisticated, yeah. um, you know, mm. fewer production dollars, mm. but um, mm. anyway, you can't ignore these narratives because they're they're on the top of the public's mm. mind, and they're being taken seriously by people in tech policy now, increasingly. But what was fascinating is. You know, that I've been trying to, uh, and people in Silicon Valley have been trying to get people uh, in Washington, uh, labor leaders, think tankers, policy wonks, to take seriously technological unemployment as a debate. And, um, and, and this re really represents the first, one of the first major breakthroughs. Now, there have been minor papers from Brookings and Cato and, and some of the others that have addressed, um, but almost all of them are dismissive. You know, almost all of them say, and the White House is not yet on board with the vision that where there's going to be technological unemployment or any particular, under they're just, they just say, some people think there could be the singularity and that it might lead to bad outcomes. And some people say it might lead to good outcomes. And, and we don't know, but we're, we're going to keep an eye on it. Um, but the fact that they acknowledge the debate um, and the fact that the, the, um, the chair, uh, Jason Furman of the, the President's Council on Economic Advisors, that he wrote a paper directly uh, addressing technological unemployment and basic income guarantee. Now, he wasn't for them. He, re he rejected them. He marshaled some evidence that it hasn't happened yet, and and people in those circles still are not bought into basic income. Um, but the fact that they're debating it and taking it seriously now is actually faster than I ever expected. I mean, this is one of the problems, I think, with us in the tech futurist community is that um, it's so difficult to, pr to predict the uneven rapidity with which these kinds of things will happen, you know, that... Um, you know, who, who who could predict the Berlin Wall? None of us. You know, who, who predicted that um, computers were, you know, what science fiction in 1959 predicted that by 19, you know, 99, everyone would have a computer in their pocket? Um, we all thought that computers would stay the size of rooms, and et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, uh, two years ago, everyone thought it was going to be Jeb Bush versus Hillary Clinton and not a proto-fascist versus Hillary Clinton, you know, proto-fascist who can't even tie his shoes or chew gum and everyone still wants to, uh, you know, half the country still wants him to be president. So who knows what's going to happen? And um, and that's what it's what's so remarkable about the rapidity with which Washington, D.C. Ap appears to be taking on these tech questions. Now, I think what's going to happen is that there's going to be another recession. You know, that's inevitable. Capitalism goes through booms and busts. And we uh, took a really long time in the United States and globally to recover from the last one. We're beginning to rebuild. We're beginning to have our labor force participation rate go back up again after, um, f you know, 15 years of steady decline from 2000 to 2015, and now it's beginning to go back up again. Um, but it's going to start going back down again with the next recession. That's going to be the next excuse for global capitalism to uh, implement cheaper robots to replace expensive human beings. And when that happens, then the next wave of precarity is going to sweep out and we're going to have to have political responses in place. That's why it's so important that we build, even in the face of the skepticism that we face right now, that we build political and policy preparation so that, uh, you know, progressive lawmakers finally get it. And they say, oh, that's what they were talking about. It's like, 70% of the population is going to be without work, and we have to have a response to that. So, um, uh, yeah, anyway, I think that that's what's so important about this. It's not that they have yet embraced our vision. Um, it's just that they're talking about it. It's on the, They understand what the issues are, and eventually they'll come our way. Excellent.